efficiency and platform engineering. How do these terms intersect? We are talking a lot about efficiency, mainly now that we see several layoffs, extra trains, and the pessimistic market. Parallel to this, IDP, Internal Development Platform, and Platform Engineering has been gaining more relevance. Look at the growth of our community. So, why are we talking about platforms in the context of efficiency? Platforms can be a powerful solution to the problem of achieving greater efficiency. I am Juliano Martins, Senior Tech Manager at Mercado Libre. We build a platform called Fury, which supports almost 15,000 developers, an average of 10,000 daily deployments, more than 26,000 microservices and their entire infrastructure and services. With our platform, we are very efficient, whether in terms of costs, performance or resilience. But it has not been an easy journey. And for that, I am here to share some lessons we've learned. I have to start with our journey. There is a lot of learning here. Mercado Libre was established in the late 90s. On the vertical axis of the graph is the number of Mercado Libre employees in IT. Our infrastructure was a monolith written in Java. However, as the company grew, we reached over 100 developers and started having problems keeping growing. For example, many developers changing the same source code, high coping, and short deployments that generate outages. In the mid 2000s, we adopted the microservices architecture to give developers greater autonomy and gain agility. This process was gradual. We started to break the monoliths into another monolith and so on until we reached an ideal size that could really be called microservices. Already thinking about divisions by business unit, developers had absolute freedom. This give us some troubles, but give us a lot of agility, an excellent time to market. These troubles are related with governance that has been severely compromised. We were inefficient in terms of costs and security. Things depended on individual developer actions who had a high cognitive load. Total freedom has created some pitfalls for us. How do you keep scale this way? It was necessary to create something to catalog our services, provide centralized and controlled mechanisms for building and deploying applications, standardize development stacks, uh, monitoring and apply security and cost policies, among other um, features. Do you realize I just described some strategies of an IDP. Exactly, eight years ago, our platform was born to help put things in order. At that moment, we didn't ask some questions that we will do today. The concept of IDP was not widespread, and the term platform engineering was not even used. If we were to make that decision today, we would ask ourselves, should we build an IDP from scratch? Should we buy a complete IDP? Or should we purchase specific products and compose our IDP based on them? I don't have the answers, and I don't believe there is one answer for everyone. However, before asking myself these questions, I consider whether the moment is right to invest in an IDP or not. Many companies do not have a well-defined and established product. Despite that, they put a lot of effort into technical issues, which are important, sure, but they, they should have a good MVP of their product first. We will likely see these companies failing. Therefore, a tip is that there is no silver bullet understand the platform concepts and apply knowing how to distinguish the right moment for your company. 
don't fall in love with technology. As nerds, we, we have this natural tendency. But returning to our journey, the first features of our platform bought immediate gains. We focus on developing services or functionalities that will improve the user experience, that avoid repetitive work, or that standardize actions. Quick wins always help us to gain executive support, which is important to invest in a platform. It's not intelligent to start with a revolution and making something very big. Going by small parts, automating small things and showing the benefits is the right way. If I were to buy or make something, I would first ask myself, where are the biggest opportunities here? What are the opportunities to seek efficiency, governance and optimization, whether in terms of costs, security or performance? And then I look for quick wins to address these opportunities. Having made that decision, which is very particular, we started discussing the transition. How was the transition to our platform, Fury, or at least to the services that we started to build at that time? It was gradual, as the platform met user requirements. In no way was the platform imposed, at least it should not be imposed. We established motivations for people to start managing their microservices on our platform. The benefits are tremendous. When developers understand that a platform leaves them free to solve problems that matter, reducing their cognitive load, the migration is natural, and the developers become platform evangelists. This platform acceptance process should be natural. The facts will help you with this. The benefits of a platform are already evident in the literature. Clearly, some trade-offs must be discussed on a case-by-case -case basis. Remember, there is no silver bullet. Okay, I talked a little bit about the process of building and implementing the platform. Now I want to talk about another problems. Today, almost 15,000 developers use our platform. But not everything is wonderful. We do have dilemmas and problems. There are many things to consider in the event horizon. The image is an easter egg. If you identify us, tell me. I'd like to highlight three points that everyone should keep in mind. First, freedom. Total freedom or controlled freedom. This is an eternal trade-off that we have to deal with. A platform will abstract a lot of work from developers. It can also limit many choices like languages or services they can use. What is the proper measure of abstraction or limits? There is no obvious answer. This is closely linked to the nature of your company. If you have a technology team, if your developers have DevOps knowledge, for example, it might even be a cultural issue you can decide whether to change. Here at Mercado Libre, we have something very close to no ops. Developers care about the business, solving the problems, not scaling a server, for example. Business itself already provide an out challenge because regardless of using a platform, the concepts to create a good application are necessary. You must know how to create a resilient and a performative solution. Doesn't matter if you have a platform or not. You need to know 12 factors, solid, clean code, you need to know very well your language, etc. Developers must understand that they are in a bigger picture and that the company's interests are vital. So, Controlled freedom helps ensure an excellent level of security compliance and efficiency. Second, support and training. You have to support and train people, as well as having good documentation. People reject the unknown by nature, survival instinct. Therefore, working hard on evangelization is crucial. Good support is also essential. For example, 
Imagine that a developer has a problem with the platform and manages to work around the problem using another solution. He will not use the platform. Here at Mercado Libre, we have a specific area for knowledge management and subject matter experts in addition to support. The area dedicated to knowledge management has created boot camps that our junior developers participate in and thus start production much faster. We also have specific acceleration tracks and many knowledge accent events. The subject matter experts support developers on various items, from using platform resources to larger problems, such as um, defining a good architecture for a solution, which serves is best to use in a give problem, performance tuning, etc. Remember, you will need to invest in support and training if you don't want to see your platform die. 30. Your platform won't handle all cases. Developers are creative. You need to plan for what will be outside your platform, creating proxies or using tools to monitor. What the platform cannot handle is necessary. Many problems for a business are very likely to arise in this scenario which naturally has a lower level of governance. Depending on the nature of your platform, what can be out of it could be third-party solutions, innovation cases or unsupported technologies, and so on. You need to understand the scenario in this universe and provide subsidies for the evolution of your platform. For example, Recurring scenarios could be a, a good use case for your platform. At Mercado Libre, about 20% of our infrastructure is created outside our Fury platform. We call this the off Fury world. Therefore, we created tools based on infrastructure as a code that allow us to have an excellent level of compliance and understand what the user is doing, avoiding leaks, drifts or vulnerabilities making sure, for example, that users are applying um, service packs, pets, etc. We also generate many metrics that allow us to make decisions. I told three points no, but one last message. I could have talked thousands of points here. You can read hundreds of books on how to build a new Google or a new Apple, but you won't make a new Google or Apple if you just follow everything. Why? Because there is a very big variable that a few are concerned about that is building a strong culture and being faithful to it. So, the last tip is to consume all the content we share in this event, but do not forget the main thing, the culture, how you manage people and build things, and for that there is no magic formula. In this short time, we talked about our journey and some learnings. Having built our platform was an excellent decision that we made. Fury supported us to scale in efficient. In addition, it allowed developers to focus on building the best products. When we imagined that how our growth would have been like without a platform, it's clear that we achieved much greater efficiency because of it. Imagine more than 10,000 microservices all their interactions, security issues, etc. being treated individually. We would not escalate. With our platform, we apply security paths in minutes. We change policies or make decisions at scale with one click. The developer goes from zero to production in four steps, with zero cognitive load. But again, let's remember the cultural issue that I just mentioned at the early. Forget good technology without good cutter. If do you want to know more details about our platform, I invite everyone to watch a more complete video that we recorded for the Platform Engineering YouTube channel. Please be inspired by our ideas and create your own innovative solution. Thanks for watching.